So I have been on eBay again, buying random crap again, and this is the result. Won this on an eBay auction for £3. It is an Acer Travelmate 223X. It has an Intel Celeron running 1.13GHz, 512 megabytes of RAM, no hard drive, and it is untested. Did I overpay for this at £3? Does it work at all? Let's find out. So this is what three great British pounds can buy you. A 20 year old brick for a laptop with a Celeron in it. Considering that the modern Celerons were bad enough, how bad can a 20 year old Celeron possibly be? The only way to know is by trying it out, but like I said before, this laptop is untested and it doesn't even have a hard drive so we need to make sure that it works before we go out and buy a hard drive for it. So first things first, does it turn on? Plug it in. It's booting. Yes, it turns on. And then it says, check some error. Some error. So now that we know that the laptop turns on, what's our next course of action? What's the next thing we're going to do to test it? So what we can do is run a live boot CD, which is basically, instead of running the operating system from a hard drive, we run it directly from a CD in the disk drive. So to do this we need to pick a very light operating system and so in this case I've picked a Linux called Slitaz. Don't know how to say it, don't really care. Um, what I do care about is this here. It's um, a very very small ISO. It can run on old and weak hardware and I think it's going to be perfect for making a live boot CD and testing out this device. So I've made a live boot CD. Let's stick it in the heap of shit and see if it runs. So here we have a language page, which is a good sign. We boot into English, and then we're going to go into Slitas Live, and I guess it's just going to boot this live image. So we'll continue when it's booted that. So as you can see, we are now booted into the desktop, so we know that the computer works, and we can go ahead and buy a hard drive for it. So uh, this is a very light operating system. Um, so we can go to different applications here, file manager, terminal, web browser, text editor. We'll have a look. The keyboard works if I do hello world. Hello world. And as you can see, that has worked. So the computer is a working machine. So now we need to shop for a hard drive, but not just your standard hard drive. We actually need to shop for an IDE hard drive, um, a hard drive old enough to actually be compatible with this computer. Because obviously this computer being the age that it is, it's not SATA compatible. So let's do a little bit of shopping and see if we can get one for under a tenner. Here it is, we've managed to get it out of the packaging. Um, now we need to just get it out of the package's packaging. And it's also come in a anti-static bag. So very well packed, what I like to see. Um, it's even, never mind, it hasn't got a protector for the, for the pins, but it doesn't matter because it's come so well packed. Um, so let's see now if we can get this Hitachi um, into the laptop. hard drives in now it's time to install an operating system so I was originally going to go for a lightweight Linux um, but I've actually changed my mind and I'm going to be installing Windows XP um, we also have a license key on the laptop so it's going to be ready to install so let's get going <music> What a fucking painful experience. Two whole days it took to install Windows XP on this computer, right? To actually get it to boot up into Windows XP and get to the home screen took me two whole fucking days. But we're now there, so very happy about that now, but not happy about the waste of two days 
of my time, I have installed Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, many many different distributions of Linux, even Chrome OS I have installed, and I've installed Windows XP twice on different machines. This is my third time. Third time was not the fucking charm. It was not. Um, but I'm glad it's over. We are now running Windows XP. Fully working, we've even managed to get into the internet um, and install a browser which is called Chameleon. Chameleon. Um, and it is now running and I've actually got it to go onto YouTube. Spoiler alert, doesn't work. But it is accessing those websites without displaying, cannot display this web page. So, let's take a look. So here we are at the Windows XP desktop where we've got my documents, my computer, Internet Explorer, Mozilla, Firefox, obviously 3D Pinball, which I have been getting into big time now. Um, but the star of the show is here, Kmelion, um, which is a lightweight web browser which allows us to search the web on Windows XP, specifically on this device that doesn't have the SSE2 support. So now let's try and watch one of my YouTube videos. So first of all, let's go to my YouTube page, which it will eventually display, bearing in mind that this computer does have a 1.13 gigahertz Celeron CPU and 512 megabytes of RAM. Um, but understandable why it's very slow. So let's just watch my most recent YouTube video. And as you'll see, it's not the smoothest of experiences, um, even if we only watch it in 144p. I think you get the point. With that £30 computer, I think you're better off spending the extra £27 um, and getting a computer like that instead of a computer like this, although then you don't get pinball. As you can see, web browsing is not the best experience on Windows XP on this machine. That is kind of like a no-shit Sherlock moment because it's an operating system that's been discontinued now for 10 years. In 2024, it's been discontinued for a long time. I can't really see any Linux that would run well on this computer and that I'd like to use kind of at the same time um, in the same way that, you know, Windows XP is a nice system to use, um, although a Linux system might be more usable. Um, whether it's more user-friendly is a different question. And I just think that I'm demonstrating here that online use for this computer would be a lost cause, as well as not being safe on a discontinued operating system. But it's a bit harder than that to just give up the Windows XP experience. Part of the Windows XP experience, of course, is the customization options. This desktop background, Pliss, being one of them. But we also got different uh, themes. This one, I mean, is less kind of Windows XP and more like someone couldn't get over Windows 98. Um, Obviously, the current theme, the normal Windows XP one. Um, and there was also, if we go into appearance, um, we have the silver and olive green Windows XP, um, which arguably did not look as good, you know, with the silver. Um, and then the olive green was not, uh, in my humble opinion, a good looking theme whatsoever. That is really disgusting. Um, if it was this type of green, then maybe it would have gone okay, but no. Blue is definitely the way to go when it comes to Windows XP. It looks the best. Screensaver wise, you had some pretty insane screensavers that we don't really see nowadays. Um, in fact, you don't really see much of screensavers at all nowadays, um, but there was a lot of 3D rendering um, going on when it came to the screensavers on, on Windows XP, as well as different pictures, such as uh, there were no pictures found in C slash document settings that lists my documents and my pictures. Um, or Mystify, which just looks like a shit show. Um, Starfield. And of course, the most common, which was kind of the default Windows XP. Um, which we'll leave that on. Let's hear the sound. Brilliant. 
brilliant. And then of course, the trusty old um, login page, our nostalgia, and then this sound. Can't get enough of that. So short of a 10 minute 3D pinball video, there's not much else I can offer you content wise with this laptop. It is a heap of junk, it's not capable of much, especially running Windows XP now. Windows XP was one of the best operating systems ever made, if you want to debate that, feel free to fuck off. Um, but yeah, it, it is a, it's a good laptop um, for throwing out of windows or using as something to keep you know helium balloons from flying away but apart from that no it's worth shit all um, and it wasn't just a three pound laptop because it's three pounds for the laptop three pounds for postage ten pounds for the hard drive altogether making it 16 pounds to do things that i can do on a virtual machine um, i'm sure that 3d pinball is available for download somewhere if it's not you can use a virtual machine um, and really 3d pinball is all i really wanted to do um, and see if I could browse on Windows XP, which quite clearly I can't. Now, pardon me. Now, you would probably be able to browse on Windows XP using the tools I used on this computer on a computer actually capable um, of doing that, which I might experiment with at some point. But really, this is not a good investment. This is not, this is a waste of money. Something like this here, which I did a video with before, which you can actually click the pop-up banner. This is, this is a worthwhile investment, £30 for a usable computer which you can put Windows 10 on and use today. I don't know about Windows 11, but do you know what, when the day comes, Linux and you'll be, you'll be going for years on something like this. On something like that, no, it's, you're better off just throwing it away. Like I did earlier, by throwing it across the room and gashing a hole in my wall while doing so, and then realising that my microphone was off, um, so I'm having to record this all again. I'll give you a snippet of that now. And that was supposed to be the outro, so I'm now re-recording it. So, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to go and make myself a lovely cup of tea. Um, a lovely cup of PG tips. I wish it could be Yorkshire tea, but I don't have any, unfortunately. Um, but a cup of tea is a cup of tea at the end of the day. So I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea, edit this video, and for now, say goodbye. Goodbye.